Welcome back to the Hot to Bets Daily Pick Show here for Wednesday, November 22nd. Now, obviously, it looks a little bit different than the past few videos, you know, really ever. Um, but, you know, obviously, Thanksgiving week here, traveling a little bit. So probably now through Sunday's show are going to look like this one, be a little bit different. But um, really should be the same show pretty much, just a little bit dumbed down. Not all the fancy graphics, not all the stuff on the website. Obviously, you can still take a look at all of that stuff over on hotdipbets.com and i would still really appreciate if you signed up for dub club early ad free view to videos even still here for thanksgiving week dub club notifications every single time i upload um, as well as access to the discord server and of course my recommended unit size now i will say the early videos may be a little bit all over the place um here with thanksgiving week going on but they'll always be up before i go to bed the night before the games um at the very least so um as always i truly appreciate all you guys who have signed up you help keep the channel live without you know this would be possible so thank you all so much and let's get into Wednesday's show now we start Wednesday's show off with Princeton taking on Old Dominion for Princeton coming to this game is the 180th overall team in the hot to bit power ranking Old Dominion is the 141st overall team on the offensive side of things Old Dominion does get the slight edge in the hot tip bet rankings 217th overall while Princeton the 260th overall team defensively Old Dominion also a tiny edge 86th overall um, while Princeton the 134th overall team but even though the model doesn't like Princeton and quite honestly doesn't love any of these ivy league schools this season except harvard it does kind of like harvard um but princeton specifically hasn't shown a lot of love to but princeton has played extremely well this season obviously enter this game four and oh on the year impressive wins over Rutgers, impressive win over duquesne hofstra and monmouth as well um you know this team hasn't played a game at home yet. They're not going to here in this game either. Have just been playing very, very good basketball, both offensively and defensively. Have shot the ball well, have defended shooters well. Um, it's hard to go against Princeton in this matchup, but I do want to do it. And, and while Old Dominion maybe isn't the poster child for success um, coming into this game, obviously don't have a Division One win yet on the season. Their only win coming against Virginia Wesleyan. Um, a loss to Ball State, which they kept reasonably close on the road. Another loss against Arkansas, you know, by nine points, um, you know, over a week ago. Um, you know, looked decent in those games, even though they lost. And that is a big factor for this game. You know, Old Dominion has like nine days of rest, eight days of rest, whatever it factors out to. Um, here coming into this game, which is going to be huge for them, I think, here in this matchup. And they've done a good job shooting the basketball. While they don't have a Division One win, they've been great from the perimeter, hitting 39.5% from beyond the arc. Um, obviously, the defense needs to step up a little bit, but the model does like them on the defensive side of things. And if they can do a little bit to improve that, I think it's a Princeton team that Old Dominion can certainly hang with. And I think at home here in this game, they're going to have an advantage. Taking Old Dominion to cover here against Princeton. Now we head to Brooklyn here for this next game as Baylor takes on Oregon State for Baylor coming to this game as the 37th overall team in the high tip power ranking. Oregon State is the 74th overall team on the offensive side of things. Baylor getting the advantage here in this matchup. 11th overall in the high tip power ranking. Oregon State struggled a bit more here to start the season. 146th overall, but defensively Oregon State is getting some love in this one 48th overall while baylor is the 94th overall team here entering this game and as far as oregon state has gone here to start the season have had some some interesting matchups i don't have a division one win that didn't go to overtime i mean both troy and app state went to overtime in both of those games um you know lose to nebraska last saturday in, in a game that they honestly just didn't look that great nebraska has kind of surprised a lot of people and even myself here this season um but overall it's an oregon state team that has struggled a little bit to shoot the basketball this season um definitely have been slightly the below expectations and slightly below what we saw out of them especially coming off of last season defensively though oregon state hasn't been terrible and certainly that is the area that they're going to have to rely on here in this game if they want to get anything going they're going to have to slow Baylor down not allow him to run in transition and really just control the tempo of the game because Baylor on both sides of the basketball is very very dangerous obviously undefeated here coming into this game including a great win over Auburn to start the season um, you know offensively Baylor has done a pretty strong job shooting the basketball this season especially from the perimeter where they're hitting 43.1 percent defensively Baylor has done a great job both defending the basket um, you know forcing turnovers really is a strong strong Baylor team 
but they're getting a lot of points here in this game and it's an Oregon State team that well yeah they come off that Nebraska loss where they didn't look great I do still think it's a team that has talent and, and has the ability it's really going to come down to one thing can Oregon State slow this game down control it on the defensive side of things if they are the ones in control of the tempo here in this matchup I think it's one that Oregon State can definitely hang in um, and I'm not super high on what Baylor has this season obviously they're still going to be a very very good team um, the Big 12 as a whole is still going to be very very good but I think they're definitely a few notches down from where that national championship team was a season ago. And I think Oregon State, you know, keeps this one close, keeps it competitive on the neutral court, taking them here to get the cover against Baylor. Now we had to link in here for this next game as Duquesne takes on Nebraska for Duquesne coming to this game as the 123rd overall team in the high Tibet power ranking. Nebraska, the 26th overall team on the offensive side of things, though, Duquesne does still get the advantage. 91st overall will Nebraska, the 106th overall team, um, but Nebraska getting quite a bit of love defensively. Seventh overall in the high Tibet power ranking will Duquesne, the 159th overall team here coming into this game. And we we're obviously just talking about Nebraska in the last matchup. Up, um, got the impressive win over Oregon State on Saturday, but really the season as a whole has just been some impressive performances for this Nebraska team. Five and zero here on the season. Now, granted, haven't played anyone in the top 150. <laughs> I mean, Oregon is their best opponent thus far. Have also played all their opponents at home. But haven't really had a close game at all. And, and obviously this one's at home once again. But Duquesne should be their toughest challenge here of the season. But their defense has just played so, so extremely well. I mean, their shot defense especially. Only giving up a 37.4 effective field goal percentage on the season. They're the number two team in the nation. Um, there in that one have defended the perimeter as well. Um, you know, are a good rebounding team. And, and offensively, they haven't been terrible either. Have shot the ball well enough to keep them in games. Um, and, and really start out here undefeated. As as far as Duquesne goes to start the season, I've also looked fairly good here this year. Their alone loss coming against Princeton um, at home, but you know, get the win over Ryder last Friday. And then offensively, is a Duquesne team that has also shot the ball fairly well here this season defensively. Haven't been nearly as good, especially when you compare them um, to what Nebraska has been able to do. And and really, one area of concern that I have for this Duquesne team is going to be defending the perimeter. That's just something they have struggled with. Now, well, you know. Nebraska hasn't ex necessarily exploited that here this season, uh, but definitely something to look into um, or to look at as we go into this game. But it is a Nebraska team that I do like here in this one. And, and I think at home in this matchup, they're just not getting enough credit for how well they have started the season. Taking Nebraska to get the cover here against Duquesne. Now we head down to Mississippi for this next game. South Dakota State takes on Southern Miss for South Dakota State. Coming to this game is the 258th overall team in the hot Tibet power ranking. Southern Miss is the 88th overall team. On the offensive side of things, Southern Miss gets the advantage here coming into this game, 148th overall, while South Dakota State, the 276th overall team, and defensively, Southern Miss has been a fairly strong team here this season, 66th overall, South Dakota State, the 236th overall team here entering this matchup, and then really for both these teams, um, you know, have had some, you know, turmoil performances have played some good teams so it's hard to exactly know what these guys look like for south dakota state obviously struggled a little bit opening night against akron um you know again against kansas state and, and really it's a south dakota state team that defensively has just been getting torched here this season their shot defense has been atrocious especially from the perimeter where they're giving up 48.1 percent from three now granted they've done a decent job shooting the ball from beyond the arc 37.5 percent and that was one area that south dakota state could certainly lean into last season um you know was that three-point shooting but their defense was actually there and they had that to rely on a little bit more they've done a bad job rebounding the ball as well um and that is one area that southern miss has actually impressed me especially on the defensive side of the ball southern miss has been a great rebounding team they do a good job forcing turnovers They've done a better job than the South Dakota State team defending shots. Um, and their three-point shooting has actually looked fairly strong this season, hitting 42.3% from beyond the arc, you know, have been a strong, strong team from that category. Um, and while Southern Miss, you know, has, has certainly had their own challenges to overcome here as the season has got going, you know, this will be their first true home game against a Division One opponent. Um, and as much as South Dakota State has struggled here this season, I think they could struggle again here in this one. I'm taking Southern Miss, get the win, get the cover here against South Dakota State.
And finally, we close out Wednesday's show with Purdue Fort Wayne taking on San Francisco for Fort Wayne. Coming to this game as the 146th overall team in the hot tip power ranking. San Francisco is the 96th overall team. On the offensive side of things, San Francisco gets the edge here, 127th overall, while Fort Wayne the 259th overall team. Um, Fort Wayne, though, the slight edge defensively, 72nd overall, while San Francisco is the 85th overall team. And, you know, overall, it's a Purdue Fort Wayne team that has actually been really really impressive here to start the season you know coming to this game five and oh you know obviously haven't played the highest of levels of competition certainly that you know first game against the paul doesn't look like nearly as great of a win um as maybe it once did but it's a team in fort wayne that just keeps winning games keeps winning games fairly big and, and offensively where they don't get a ton of love overall in the rankings they have done a decent job shooting the basketball you know a 54.5 effective field goal percentage on the season 38.8 percent from beyond the arc um it's also been really strong in the turnover department both offensively and defensively um and their defense has shown up and really done a good job keeping them in games and in allowing them to have opportunities um really the the key for purdue fort wayne is to get the ball up and down the court run in transition push that tempo um and really do their best to control the pace of the game san francisco on the other side of things hasn't had a terrible start to the season certainly a couple of games they probably wish they could have back some wins they probably wish they had a loss against boise state a loss against grand canyon you know two games that, that ultimately the san francisco team probably should have been more competitive in i mean they were close in both of those it's not like they got blown out in either of those games but but two games is certainly um you know they wish they would have won offensively though san francisco has struggled a bit from the perimeter here this season only hitting 31.3 percent from beyond the arc um, has struggled a bit in the turnover department as well a lot of you know unnecessary turnovers here this season but have been strong on the defensive end of the court um, as well but i think some of the offensive struggles especially those turnovers could come back to bite san francisco here in this game and it's a purdue fort wayne team that i'm gonna be quite honest i've kind of just fallen in love with um and, and certainly this is going to be their toughest opponent yet here this season but i think they're certainly up for the challenge i think they keep this one competitive i don't think uh, san francisco is going to run away with this one taking purdue fort wayne here in this one and that'll do it here for wednesday's show and it was a little bit jerky here today certainly with the the new recording location here for this week so we'll get better as the week goes on get a little smoother um rotation and, and figure out how these can flow a little bit better but if you want to see more sports betting action and see all the matchups for the games we went over as well as all of college basketball going on today head over to hottipbets.com you can take a look at the matchups for that there as well as college football nfl for the weekend of course got the nba and nhl up there every single day ufc every weekend we got uh fights there as well as horse racing picks so make sure you go take a look at all of that also follow the social links down below facebook instagram tiktok twitter to stay up to date with everything that's happening over there as well as if you're watching here on youtube hit that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell notifications so you don't miss out on any future uploads and most importantly drop a comment down below let me know who you guys are betting on here for wednesday's card and thank you for watching today's video i will see you guys tomorrow